Greetings, I'm Berent and welcome to Meet Me at the Table. Today we're going to be doing a playthrough of Korra Quest. This is really exciting for me. This is done by Dan and Cora Hughes. This is a family favorite that we've been playing through a little bit already and I'm excited to do another quest with you, but I'm not going to do it by myself. Ridley is going to be joining me. Are you ready, Ridley? Yeah! <laughs> All right. We're going to be doing a new quest. Back when they did the Kickstarter, we did one of the quests. I think we did the snake, snake one. Yeah, yeah we and did then the there snake are these Oh, gnome guys, and they really needed our help. Oh, that's right. I remember that. Well, we're going to do a different one this time. But I'm time. not 11 anymore. You're 12. not 11 anymore. You are 12. This is true. <laughs> but the, this um, Quora quest has a great quest book, and we're going to be doing one out of here. But do be aware that you can actually go onto a Facebook site that has a whole bunch of other fan-made stuff that is in the process of being created. Wait, you can, really? Yeah, you can create your own characters and your own quest. Can you believe that, Ridley? No, I, 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 I'm surprised. Like, it, what? It's really cool. You can cool. do that? You can. Uh, it's like Dungeons and Dragons. It kind of is. This is true. So we're going to set up another quest. We're going to be playing through. We're going to play through the Great Teapot Caper, or that's going to be our plan here. So I hope you're excited to do that. If you're excited to see if we can make it through the Great Teapot Caper with our four heroes, then I need you to meet me at the table. <laughs> that's right. I'm teaching them good. The first thing we're going to do is set up our dungeon. So I'm going to grab tiles 2 through 13. We are going to go through a quick setup. Even though I did in the Kickstarter, there may be some differences now in that the real game is out. So I want to make sure you understand exactly how this game is set up. And then we're going to go straight into the playthrough. I'm really pretty excited. We're going to go ahead and grab tiles 2 through 13, shuffle them all up. And we have them out here in stacks of 3, along with each one of these being a tile used for the actual scenario we're going through. What we're going to do is take that tile, mix it in to these stacks of tiles and we're going to make an entire quest deck by stacking one tile on top of the other ones. Once we get that all ready, we'll have one big stack of quest tiles. Once our tile deck is created, we are going to put this token on top. This is going to be given to the person that explores for the first time, and that's important to this game because if you ever go through an entire round without exploring, something could potentially happen to your brave explorers. The next thing we have to do is choose our characters. I have Healer Cat and Sword Girl. Those are my two. We'll look at Ridley's here in just a second, but we're going to talk about what each of these characters has. First off, Healer Cat is going to have six health, five speed, and is going to be rolling a red die plus the weapon. The weapon she is using is actually a bodyguard cat. Look Check at that out. Look how cute that thing is. It's, like, <laughs> like it's so cute. I really like it. It is pretty cool. I think that's the best weapon in the game. <laughs> well, we'll see. Because my weapons I have for my characters are kind of lame. Well, we shall talk about them soon. Right now, this one is going to be using a two range. That's what the two little orange things are. And it's going to be rolling a white dice to add to that red one. Of course, she has an ability here as well that says I can use a full action to roll two white dice. And for every success, I get to heal one point of damage from your adjacent hero. We'll see how that works during the playthrough. The second character I'm using is Sword Girl. Sword Girl has eight health, so she has more than that, but she only moves four. She uses a red dice, plus she has the broadsword, which only has a one range, so she has to be in melee combat. She has an ability here that says you and or one adjacent hero become determined. That's the characters I'll be using. Let's go check out my sons. So now I'm gonna show you my characters being Robo Kettle, I always used to call him Robo Dude, and Halfling. Now, in the Kickstarter, I was Halfling, so I, and I really liked this character, so I decided to come back to her, or him, whatever it is, uh, and I decided to also pick the Robo Dude, I think he looks kind of cool, so I decided to pick him. Also, the art. I can't stress how good it is, and it was made by kids. Like, that is crazy. I, I, I don't think I can make art like this. But it is just so cool. And look at these great, great spinner things that use your health. We never got that in the Kickstarter, did we? No, that's actually going to be new for this. It's just pretty cool. There even is one for the bad guy as well. We have one that also Wait, we're really? going to be using. Yeah, for the... I did not actually see that one. <laughs> He's tricky like that. I hit it for me. Oh, that's sad. So first, we're going to take a look at my Robo Kettle. Now, he is new only in this game. He's not in the Kickstarter. But he has 10 health, 3 speed, and a Morning Star, which I do think that's uh, Sword Girl's sword is a little bit cooler, along with the cat. Like, those two are, like, way cooler of weapons. But this weapon's still really cool. And then when it comes to Halfling, I've already went over her, so make sure to watch the Kickstarter as well. But I'll still go over the Halfling again. 
he or they have six health, five speed, and a crot catapult. I thought it was a crossbow. Whatever. Nope, it's catapult. Um, and uh, I think I already mentioned this, but they also have actually no, I haven't mentioned this. They have these little cool characters. Uh, I think they're a little bit upgraded from the Kickstarter. Like this is new, and this seems a little bit more upgraded. Doesn't it? Don't Might they kind of seem upgraded? Could be. But anyways, those are all my characters, all the stuff. And now I'm going to turn it over to my dad. He's going to talk about the first mission and all that stuff. Oh, there is one more thing I would like to go over being the special abilities. Kettle, or Robo Kettle, is move up to move up to two adjacent enemies next to you, one square each. So that's his special ability. I already went over the halflings, but I'm still going to go over it again. For those of you that didn't see the Kickstarter, choose not to take any damage from an attack, which is pretty good. That is pretty good. Next, you want to grab all of your enemies, make sure they're all set to go here. We have orcs, goblins, rat folk, and spiders. And one way you can change the difficulty of the game is every enemy does have a regular side and a tough side. So if you want to make it more advanced, you give yourself the tough side. We're not going advanced, Ridley. We're going to stay as easy as we can. Also, Rack Guy's new. We have never fought him before. We've fought spiders, orcs, and goblins in the previous Kickstarter. Never fought rat folk. This is true, and it, this, it, we've played a few of these missions already, but we yet have to see the rat folk. So this is pretty cool. We get to try out a new enemy. I am very excited to try out this new enemy. Next, we're going to grab our decks of cards. We have our treasure cards. We also have our adventuring cards here. These are going to be items you're going to find inside each of the quests. They're kind of like quest cards that actually have to do with the quest, which is pretty cool. On top of that, this is something that is really cool in the game. They come with blank cards. Check that out. You, they have blank cards that you can use to create your own treasures, your own starting equipment, and your own quest cards. So you can create your own quest, put some awesome cards in there. On top of that, you can make a couple new guys to go in there and have their own things. And on top of that, you can even make some treasure that they can find. Oh, that's really cool. They out of these blank cards. I think that's a really awesome experience. Here's the great teapot caper. In this one, we are going to be going against orcs, gremlins, rat folk, spiders, and we have that troll. I'm not even going to show you that card. We're going to show him if we ever get to him. You think we'll get to him, Ridley? Yeah, most likely. <laughs> I, I, think, I think we can do this. <laughs> I love the optimism. We're going to be able to be victorious if at any time all heroes standing on card E have a total of 13 or more gold coins between them. We're going to be defeated if any of the heroes are defeated. That's the cool thing about this game is it's not once one person's done, the others can keep playing. No, if any hero is defeated, that means the game's over and you can play this one again. And they're not a linked scenario, so you could go ahead and play a different one if you wish, but they do kind of have an overarching theme, which is really cool. In this adventure, you will be collecting money printed on item cards. Each coin on a card represents one gold. Coins on potion cards still count, even if the potion has been used. Here's an example of what they're talking about. If you notice, if we found the longbow Ridley, we would get three coins. Pretty cool, huh? Mm -hmm. Kevin the gnome runs up to you. Hi, I'm accidentally broken ribs are Pebble Dash's favorite teapot. He tells you. <laughs> the one with the little jewels around it. And the little and the lid with the... With a picture of a zebra on the side of it, I was wearing it as a hat and trying to make my sister a Annabelle laugh, and it slipped off and it smashed on the floor. What shall I do? He's going to be furious. He's going to fire me. You suggest that Kevin should tell Wizard Pebble Dash the truth about and buy a replacement teapot to give him as an apology. That's a good idea. Kevin says, But the only person who sells them is old Margaret Tucterback, and she lives in the middle of a house of dungeon. That's far too dangerous a place for a gnome like me to go. I wonder if you could go get and get it for me. Oh, probably not, though. <laughs> you sigh and agree to go and get a teapot. As you head off towards the dungeon, Kevin calls after you. Thank you! I haven't actually got the money to pay for the teapot, he shouts back. Could you lend me the money? I'll pay you back! We have our characters on our starting tile with the not welcome mat on it, which is pretty awesome. And we're going to begin by doing our first character's actions and free actions. They're allowed to do as many free actions they want, but they only get two full actions. Also, the order in which you activate your characters is totally up to the team. You can move this person first this turn and maybe that person first the next turn. It really doesn't matter. It's totally up to how you want to do this. The full actions you can do are move, search, swap, revive, and attack. Each of these can be found in the rulebook on the associated pages over there. Moving means 
means you can use your speed when you move. The search, you're going to be able to search maybe treasure chests. Also, there might be something in the actual mission that you need to search. Also, you can swap cards if you're adjacent. You can swap anything you find in a treasure chest to somebody else. Revive means you can pick somebody back up if they are stunned. And of course, we can attack an evil monster. The free actions we can do is reveal these tiles. Also, we can use any items that were given to us from the chest or just from the missions themselves. I'm going to start off my characters with Robot Kettle. And he's going to have a free action of exploring the next dungeon tile. I'm going to keep this so we know that this meter does not have to go down. That is true. And I'll just explain it really quick. What Ridley's mentioning is if you, then when this tile, is, when this is, when you search for the first time in a turn, you're going to grab this off the stack. That proves to the rest of the group that we have searched one. If we do not search a tile, in the round at all then like, <laughs> spiders <laughs> yes spiders are going to come but it does take a couple turns so don't be like ron weasley and be afraid of spiders that's right <laughs> this is going to slowly move off down this track and if there's ever a time we don't explore this moves down if it moves off then we're going to put a spider on Wait, every single spiders? tile that has a cobweb in it and yes the starting tile does have a cobweb Uh oh that's not good at all no it's not going to be good so let's not do that ridley you're right you grabbed this off you did a great job let's see what tile you have found. Oh. Uh-oh. I don't think that looks good at all. <laughs> you I... found a whole bunch of monsters. <laughs> okay. All right, where are you going to put it? Right up in front? Uh, very far away from no, Why don't me. we put it so that we can actually hit these guys? No. Yeah, because you, you, for your other action, you could maybe attack one of them. Okay, I guess. Whoopsies. Well, it turns out we actually forgot that it's actually the gremlin that is supposed to be here, not the goblin. And you can tell by these symbol things right on their card, and there is no double X's. So that meant that there is only one bone, which means the gremlin will be taking its two spots right there, along with an orc. Revealing that tile was a free action. So I am going to be attacking this gremlin with my two dice here, and I'm going to show you how the attacking thing works next. Robo Kettle is going to roll his red dice from his normal weapon and the white dice from his Morning Star. And this gob or this uh, gremlin is going to die right now, so let's make sure to kill him. Go for it. And he's dead so he is gone we're just gonna throw him out of the way here <laughs> and fantastic, then really. we have this weapon and this weapon survived and robo kettle is officially awesome we knew he was dead because he only had one health and i did one damage which means the gremlin is dead and there's only one gremlin left to go I would really like to hit that orc right there, but unfortunately the melee weapon's only a range of one due to this arrow thing. So that means I'm going to have to move right next to this orc, which is very risky, but I'm taking my chances. Actually, I changed my mind. I'm going to move two other spaces so that next, I can use another free action next turn to explore another area. That's a great idea, Ridley. And just to tell people here, as you're moving through these characters, they do not get any type of op tax opportunity or anything like that. This game is super fun and super light. We really enjoy how awesome the, the game flows. We decided to have Sword Girl go next. So for her first action, she's going to attack this orc. Hopefully she can take it out. I get to roll a red and white dice. This orc has three health. Let's see how we do. We didn't hit at all. Oh, that was terrible. You sound like that dwarf. Oh, that's right. In our last playthrough, our dwarf didn't hit anything. So lucky for us, uh, maybe not lucky for us, but whenever you miss in this game, your character becomes determined. And if you notice, she gets to roll more dice this time. So we are going to take our second action and try to hit him with these three dice this time. Let's see how it goes. Well, we got one. So she's no longer determined because we did get that one hit. And we're going to place this one damage out on the orc. We'll place our damage marker right here. And if she was determined and missed again, too bad for you. You don't get double determined. You're just <laughs> stuck the way you are. Now I could do a free action and explore over here, but there's a lot of monsters on here. I think we need to take these out first. Don't you think so, Ridley? Yes. Now it is my halfling's turn and I'm going to use the catapult with the 
ranged attack. And Dad, how will you teach us about line of sight? I can teach you about line of sight. The way line of sight works in this game is you're going to draw an imaginary straight line from any corner of the square the attacker is standing on to any corner of the square the target is standing on without blocking the line. And if you're able to accomplish that, you have line of sight. So <laughs> we're going to try to attack this orc. We don't. We can draw a line from any of these corner stats. So we could even attack this guy if we wanted to by drawing a line over there. Really, let's see if we hit that guy. Let's see if my halfling can hit this orc. It did one damage to this orc, which means that he is almost dead. I just need that cat woman to hit the orc. But Ridley, you still have one more action you can do with the halfling. Why don't you attack again? Sure. And I killed him. He is out of the game now. So goodbye, orc. The only character left is going to be cat, healer cat. Healer cat is going to use one action to move. I'm going to move one and I think I'll even move two up to here and move a final third over to there. That way we have multiple plays we could go if we decide to start exploring. I'm then going to make a ranged attack with my bodyguard cat. I do it with two damage. But wait, Dad, can't you explore a free dungeon at... Yes, I could explore for free over on that dungeon, but do you really want more monsters when it's the end of my turn? I don't think we're going to get more monsters. You don't think so? All right, you know what? I'll give it a shot. For a free action, I am going to explore this tile. All right, Ridley, you ready? <laughs> <laughs> this could be bad. Oh, we found two guys, but we also found a treasure chest, which is pretty awesome. The sad thing is we now might have put our healer in a bad spot. We're going to place down two orcs right here, but that's okay. We should be able no. to take them out next turn. But I now get to attack, okay? I get one attack, though, because I have one action left. So I am going to make an attack against that... God, was it a gremlin? Yes, it is a gremlin. We're going to see if we can take him out at least. Let's roll it up and see how we do. Oh, no, I'm determined, but I also have to worry about this gremlin when it comes to the enemy turn. Dad, your guys always seem to be determined. I like to be determined sometimes. Having completed our hero's turn, we're going to move to the enemy phase, and they're going to get two actions just like we do. The first one they're going to try to perform is an attack if they're within range and line of sight of a hero, and otherwise they will attempt to move. If they're not able to attack, they'll move within range and line of sight of a hero so that they can get them with their other action. Or they may even just have to take two move actions, but I don't think any of these monsters are moving at all. They're just going to smack us around. So if you look at where we are, we have our gremlin right here, and we have our two orcs. Our orcs are melee characters, so this one's going to attack us twice. This one is going to move up and attack. So poor healer kitty here, who is never really supposed to be in the front lines, is right in the front lines. A eh, little iffy on whether or not we should have explored there, but that's okay. We This one is going to try to shoot, and it's in range and line of sight of absolutely everybody, so we can de decide who it's going to attack, and we're going to have it go ahead and attack Robo Kettle. The orc standing next to Healer Kitty is going to get two red dice to attack her twice. The first one does two damage. The second one does hopefully nothing. Nope, it did an extra damage. Then the one that moved up is going to attack her as well, but only once. It did nothing. Healer Kitty is going to take half of her health. She is down to three total health left. Next we have the Gremlin attacking Robo Kettle, but I do want to mention we should put this down to show that this chest is locked. Once you grab the chest, you can remove it because the tile actually shows an open chest, which is pretty awesome. So I'll place that down there and see how this one does against Robo Kettle. The Gremlin will be rolling one red die as according to his little card here and hopefully miss. Let's see if Robo Kettle gets hit. No, he is totally safe. With the enemy phase complete, we'll move into the cooldown phase. The first thing we do is refresh all our heroes. Ridley, we've been forgetting to turn our hero cards when we have completed their turn. Whenever a hero completes their turn, you turn their card sideways. That way you know your that hero has completed its turn and you don't get them mixed up. We totally forgot. So we're going to refresh our characters at this point. And we're also going to move any hero tokens down on the level of the countdown track. The way that works is, say I use my special move, you're going to place this on two. Every turn, it's going to tick down on during the cooldown phase, and once it gets off the uh, the actual cool countdown track, you get this token back, and then you can use your special move again. Next, as we mentioned, if you don't explore a, any of the dungeon, you're going to move that threat tracker down as well. It, it's going to stay on two because Ridley did explore a tile. The last thing we do is when the threat token is, comes off the track, we are going to spawn spiders. Moving back into the hero turn, we are going to place our token back on top of the deck to show that we need to at least explore something. 
We'll move into our second turn, and I think I'm going to start with Healer Cat. What do you think, Ridley? No, I feel like we should do Halfling first so we can explore. Maybe there's like a pit of spines they can fall into. Oh, all right. That's a great idea. I'm going to move this out of the way. Why don't you grab that token and then the next card so that we can see maybe there is something underneath there. What did you find? And also, that gives us so that we don't get any spiders. That's true. No spiders. What'd you get? Oh, that actually might turn out to be pretty good. You have to make sure that it faces this place. Oh, look at that. You could move around here and maybe get them from the back. What do you think? Mm-hmm. Yes, I'll use my first action to move. So we're going to move. He can move five. And I'm going to stand right there and we're going to shoot him with my bow. Actually, it is a catapult and we are going to see what we can do. And we hit him for one. And now we are going to be adding our damage place right there. Dad, shouldn't I be able to move Halfling one more space so that Sword Girl can come in and attack them? Well, that's not a bad idea. So you just want to move up one more space yes. right there? All right, that sounds great. I would. I, why do I use Sword Girl now? She has four speeds, so she can go one, two, three, four. And you're right, now she's adjacent to that orc, so she can make an attack against her with a broadsword. We'll roll our two dice and see how it goes. I got one more hit, so he only has one health left. We'll place our damage right here. I'm going to use Cat or Healer Cat next. I'm going to move one, two away from all of this. I cannot use my special power with her because it says that I can heal another a point of damage off an adjacent hero. And I can't be adjacent to myself. So the way I understand it, she can't actually heal herself. But that's okay. I'm going to attack that gremlin then instead. I get to roll a red die and two white dice because I am a Determined Healer Kitty. And the Determined Healer Kitty crushed this gremlin. Since we hit, we are going to flip Healer Cat back over. One thing we noticed off camera was the fact that Sword Girl could have used this ability because it's not an action to use, but we didn't do that. But that, And that's okay. We're going to see now what the robot can do. Ridley, move our Robo Kettle and see what he can do. Okay, so I'm going to move him one space here and he's going to attack this orc and finish him off so we are going to roll the, with these two dice with the morning star and we did one hit and he is dead and now we are just going to pluck him off the board perfect and we'll get rid of these two damage tokens as well We'll move into the enemy phase, and they're going to choose an opponent to attack. When there's a tie, we get to choose. And right now, this orc is standing in base-to-base -base contact with both Halfling and Robo Kettle. We're going to choose to have it attack Halfling. We have a plan. Let's see if he hits my Halfling. He gets two hits! That's okay, Ridley. Remember our plan? What? Oh, I can use my special ability, which makes it so I, I, don't, I take zero damage. That's correct, and we'll put it up on the track, and you get to get attacked again. So don't roll like that this time, but see what happens. Roll him up, Ridley, see if he does any damage the second time. None! See, it worked out! Our plan was successful! Yay! The monsters have completed their turn. We'll move into our countdown phase, and now we have a countdown marker on there, so we'll move the halfling marker down one. This doesn't move because we were able to explore this tile, and I'm going to place our token back on top of the quest deck. We are going to now do Robo Kettle. He is going to attack this orc and then explore an adventure tile. Let's roll him up and see if I hit anything. And I miss! That's okay, you're determined. Do you want to just use your second action and attack again? Yes! Let's grab a right die and add it to there and hopefully do a better job this time. Hey, you did so much better. Robot Kettle is amazing. But Ridley, I have bad news for you. He stays, or good news, he stays determined. The bad news is you still didn't do any damage to the orc. I'm going to use my super move, which will move one enemy away from me. So we'll move it right there. Does that sound like a good spot? Yeah, I think that's a good spot. I think it is too. I'm going to go next with Sword Girl. What do you think? Mm -hmm. All right, let's hit this guy and see if we can take him out. I yeah. can't do any worse than Robo Kettle, can I? Yeah. <laughs> Before I make my attack, I am going to use Sword Girl's special ability to allow myself and adjacent hero to become determined. That means Sword Girl's determined, and she is adjacent to Halfling, so Halfling is going to be determined as well. I get to roll two white dice and a red dice to see if we can do some damage to this orc. I got two hits. That's pretty good. Ridley, should I go again? Yes. All right. This time I'm not determined anymore because why? I hit somebody, right? Yes. How did hit Robo Kettle? Did he hit somebody? No. <laughs> I'm going to roll these two dice, see how it goes. Oh, no, Ridley, I didn't hit no. this time. But that's okay. You started as a Robo Kettle. I did, but I'll be determined for my next attack somewhere down the line. 
We'll place our special token right up there. And I think I better go with Healer Kitty next. The reason why is I want to maybe take out this orc and I, we can have Halfling explore the next tile because Robo Kitty, or not Robo Kettle, but Healer Kitty's almost dead. And I don't think she's going to be able to explore the next tile without potentially taking damage. What do you think? Mm hmm. Okay, I'm going to move her one, two, three. You can move through heroes if you, as long as you don't end your turn on their square. So Healer Kitty's going to move there and attack with her bodyguard cat. But wait a minute, Robo Kettle's really big. How did she get past him? <laughs> She's pretty tricky. Let's roll our white and red die and see how it goes. I was able to do one that takes out the orc. We'll remove the orc and the damage tokens. Ridley, it's going to be your turn with Halfling. What do you think you should do? I think I should open that chest. I don't see any problem with that. Why don't you draw the top chest card and see what it is? You found, what's that? Another. It's a mace. Oh, I thought it was another morning star. Nope, it's a mace. And remember, we're trying to collect money, so that's two gold for us right there. Whoa. Halfling gets this mace, and if she wants to use a full action, she could trade it with a friend that's adjacent. But right now, you get to hold on to that. Yay! I am now going to do my second action, which is going to be one, two, three, four. And I'm going to be revealing the nut dungeon tile so that this does not make spiders appear. And we got this room this? with letter and it's e? Letter e. What is that? We get to read something out of the book. Remember, that's how it works. Whenever you find one of the letters, it's part of the adventure. I also am going to remove this from us because we did open that chest. Old Morgan Cutterbuck is sitting by a huge table covered in piles of fancy plates, cups, and saucers of all sorts of different shapes, sizes. Sitting right next in the middle of the table is a teapot with jewels around the lid and a picture of a zebra on the side. What is this, adventurers? Morgan shrieks at you. I hate adventurers, filthy creatures. They are always getting their dirty little hands all over my lovely, nice things and breaking them. Well then, what do you want? You ask Morgan how much the teapot is. It's 30 gold coins. She says angrily. Not a penny less. If at any time all the heroes who are standing on card E have a total of 30 or more gold coins between them, they immediately buy the teleport and you win the game. If heroes on card E don't have 30 gold coins, they will need to keep on exploring the dungeon until they find more. I am going to move my halfling right here because he can still move one more space and I'm going to do that so that I will be able to flip over a next dungeon tile so that we don't have to get spiders. That's a very good idea. Just to make sure people understand, when you do a free action, you can interrupt your other actions and continue them after you're done with it. So as Ridley did, he was moving here. He had total of five speed, one, two, three. We used the free action to reveal the tile. He could continue his full action if he wishes to, which he did. He chose to move one more space, right, Ridley? Uh -huh. Nice. Ridley, there's no enemies this time. How about that? Yay! <laughs> We're gonna move our tokens down one space and you get your halfling's token back. And we'll move into the next turn by placing our token back on top of the quest deck. Robo Kettle's going to be going first, and I'm going to move him one, two, three. And for his free action, he's going to look at the next dungeon tile so that we don't have to get spiders. And what do you know? It's a chest. So we're going to put it right there. And for another free action, he's going to open the chest. That's a great idea. I'm going to place a gremlin here and a gremlin here. But remember, Ridley, opening chest is not a free action. So you have some choices. You could grab the chest, you could beat up this gremlin, or you could take the mace from Halfling. It's up to you what you want to do. I think I'm going to take the chest. Oh, yeah? Because we take the really chest. need the gold. Okay. Well, let's remove that chest token. And here is your next chest card. Reveal it and read it. What would you find? A belt. A belt of teleportation. You wear... The wearer moves to any unoccupied square within the dungeon. Use two actions. So it does use two actions to use. It's worth three gold, so we're up to five gold. That's fantastic. On top of that, I forgot to mention, all of our starter equipment has a gold piece on it. So we do have more than we think right now. We have five, six, seven, eight, nine gold at this present time. That's the end of Robo Kettle's turn. Dad, I think Cat Girl should go next. Well, Healer Cat would be great to go, but I think we should get Halfling out of the way so some of my other characters can come up. So why don't okay. you do that person? One, two. And then I'm going to use my second action to attack the Gremlin. Because we found that mace, I, can't, I get to use a red dice. So I get two red dice and one white dice. Let's see if we can hit anything. 
and we do one damage. So the gremlin is now dead, so I'm now going to become undetermined. And Ridley, again, we keep forgetting, after we use our characters, we should be turning them sideways to remind ourselves not to use them again. But we're doing pretty good. We've only used each other once. This time, I think you're right. I think Catgirl's going to go. She has a total of five speed. One, two, three, four, five, right up next to that gremlin, and she's going to use her bodyguard cat. And remember when we counted out our money? Well, somehow this cat's not worth anything, really. So oh, no. <laughs> we don't the have cat's as not worth a buck. Not worth a buck. Wait, does no one want to buy the cat? I guess nobody does. Besides, it's her personal pet. She's not going to want to sell it. Let's roll it up and see if we get him. We got one hit. That's enough to take out that gremlin. So we got two gremlins. I'm going to move Sword Girl, one, two, three, four, and another action for one, two, three. Since there's no enemies here, we'll just move our tokens off the board, meaning Sword Girl and Robo Kettle both get their, sword, their tokens back. We'll place this back on top of there, and we're going to make sure to refresh all of our characters. We're going to start the round with Sword Girl. She's going to grab the token and explore down here, and let's see what we find. We'll place an orc right here, and we have a new enemy, the Rat Folk. We will see how they work. They are a, a enemy that has only two health, but rolls a red and white die, and uh -oh. it's a melee character, so it only attacks adjacent very characters. Good. Well, we'll see. It hopefully isn't going to be too bad. Hopefully, we can just take them out. Yeah, but I think that's a better idea. Sword Girl is determined. We're going to gain a red and two white dice. Let's roll these up and see what we do against that gremlin. Oh, no, it's an orc. I'm sorry. We hit once with the orc, so we've done one damage to the orc. Remember, the orc has three health. We'll place one of the damage tokens here. That was my first action with her. We'll roll up our second dice here. We got one. Oh, I almost got him, but we got two. That's not too bad. So our orc has two damage already. We'll place two damage down on that orc. Who should go next, Ridley? I think Halfling should go next. I'm going to do for a free action, explore a dungeon tile. Uh-oh, there's a giant bug in the middle of the way. A bug, and look at there's two orcs on there too. So I'll have to place those down on that tile. Wow, we drew a pretty tough tile here. We'll see if we can actually take out these guys. Let's first place our two orcs right like that, and they're right in your way, Ridley. Uh-oh, what am I gonna do? I'll hit them. With my mace, I get to use two red dice. And we did it! Two hits! And that's only your first action. Why don't you hit him and finish him off? Okay. Two more hits! This halfling is super good at hitting. You're right. And we took that orc off the board. And this time, we're going to remember at the end of the halfling's turn to rotate the card to show that that character has activated. Who should go next, Ridley? I think Robo Kettle should go next. All he's right. going to do one, two... Three, and he's going to go right there, and he's going to hit the orc for his next action. Since Robo Kettle is determined, he has two white dice and a red die. Let's see if we hit anything. And we hit nothing, so he stays determined. Healer Kitty is the only person left with her first action. She's going to attack the orc. Let's see if we get him. We did not, so I'm going to use my second action to attack, and this time I am determined. Let's hit him for one. We did. We got at least one. That orc is finally off the board. Wow, we all got to learn from Halfling. Ratfolk is a melee character. He's going to move up one and attack Sword Girl, and the orc is a melee character and is going to attack Robo Kettle twice. Robo Kettle is going to get hit one, and the second attack, nothing. So only one damage to Robo Kettle. He is going to go to nine. At this point, Ratfolk is going to attack with a white and red die. Let's see how she does against Sword Girl. One damage to Sword Girl. She is going to go to seven. We'll refresh all of our characters Robo and Kettle place will go our first token and back use on his top attack of the deck. action to hit the orc. Okay, remember, Robo Kettle's determined since he can't hit anything, and we use our for our first action the swap action, which means we get two red dice, and we got two hits, and the Hork takes two damage. Sword Girl's gonna go next because she's also determined, and let's see if she's determined enough to take out this Rat Folk. Being determined gives her an extra white dice. Let's see if she's able to do some damage to that Rat Folk. She did hit for one. The Rat Folk does have two health. So for the second action, I'm going to swing my sword again and hopefully take him out. I got him. So we're able to take that Rat Folk off the board. As a free action, we are going to use our search. We're going to move this tile over to there. And we have found, what is this? We have found H. All right, we'll put it like that because I don't even know what that is over there. Let's read what it says inside the book. You see a large stone table in the room. 
In the center of it sits a skull made entirely of crystals. It looks pretty valuable. You notice that the skull is resting on some sort of pressure pad that will probably set off a trap if you take the skull. Nearby is a pile of stones. If you could find a stone that is the same weight as the skull, you think that you could quickly swap it for the treasure and fool the trap into thinking it was still there. Ridley, this is something out of Indiana Jones. A hero standing on the car on card H may take a full action to roll one red dice to swap the crystal skull with a stone. If they roll a success, then they have successfully fooled the trap and they take the crystal skull, but the special item card. If they do not roll a success, then the trap is triggered and a barrage of arrows shoot out of the walls. The hero and any other hero or enemy also standing on card H takes three damage. The hero then takes the crystal skull special item card. Really, that's just like that trap in Indiana Jones, isn't it? Exactly, just like the one in the movie. So I'm going to move Halfling 1, 2, 3, and we're going to use my action to get the crystal skull. Let's roll it up and see what we get. We hit! We got the success, so we get to get the crystal skull and we don't have to worry about the trap. Oh. Look at all the money on that card, Ridley. Let's count off. 1, oh. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 gold oh. coins on that card. Oh. <laughs> Healer Kitty's the last one to go. She doesn't have much healing to do. I could heal these people for one, but I think we're doing fine. I'm going to move one, two, three, four over to here. And with my bodyguard cat, we're going to attack that orc and hopefully take it out. Let's roll our dice and see what happens. I did get that one hit. We were able to take out that orc. That takes the orc off the board. There are no enemies this turn to activate. We're gonna go right into the refresh phase. So we're gonna take all of our characters and stand them back up so our actions are ready to go. We'll take our torch, put it back on top of the deck and we'll move into the next turn. We decided to start with Healer Kitty for this turn. The first thing we're gonna do is explore. It's a free action, we're gonna use a move action and a free action here to explore this tile. We have found what says, this is G, this is part of the actual story. We're gonna place it just like that and let's check out the book. This corridor has so many cobwebs that you don't notice the very thin wire stretch across it until it's too late. Catching your foot on it, you stumble and fall to the floor. Oh no, Ridley, <laughs> something bad's about to happen. As you pick yourself up, you feel a hand rummaging around in your backpack. Toad Breath the Goblin was hiding in the cobweb and just trying to steal something from you. That sneaky thief! Place a goblin study on adjacent square to Hero who revealed character card G. This Toad Breath the Goblin. So here's our goblin standee and we're going to place it on that tile. And it looks here that it's randomly going to select a card from the hero that uncovered card G. Well, that was Healer Kitty, Ridley. Guess what we're losing? What? This. No! We lose her cat. This is the only thing she has. So Toad Breath the Goblin has the cat. And he's going to now try to get out of here. It says here Toad Breath steals the item card. Toad Breath immediately makes one move full action towards the exit ladder on the dungeon exit card. During each enemy phase, Toad Breath will use both of their actions to move toward the exit. If Toad Breath is defeated by one of the heroes, then that hero gets the stolen card. However, if Toad Breath reaches the ladder printed on the dungeon entrance card, then they escape and the stolen card is out of the game. So we gotta try to stop this guy. No, not Hila Kitty. Our goblin has a total speed of three. It's gonna move one, two, three with our bodyguard cat. At this point, Healer Kitty still has her entire action left. She's gonna use the rest of her move. Well, actually, I think she's gonna explore. I have good faith that Sword Girl here is gonna be able to take out that goblin. So she's going to explore the next tile above her. And let's see what she finds there. Oh, look at this, Ridley. She has found a treasure chest. Chess. Yes, but look how many enemies. Oh, no. Let's see. Hey, if we this can is, isn't this the only time we get to encounter a goblin in this game? It is the only time. You're right. Because normally, that symbol that it has up here, this X, is being taken up by our rat folk in this particular scenario. We'll place two gremlins, a rat folk, and a locked treasure chest up here in the top. She still has two actions left. Or she still has one action left because she could use a free action to explore those tiles. So she technically hasn't done any actions yet. Let's use her... Oh, she doesn't have any weapons! I was going to say attack the guys, but we forgot that this has been stolen from us. So we have to chase after this guy. And I can't actually damage him because I don't have any weapons. Ridley, this is out of control! Uh -oh. 
Since I don't have any weapons, I'm going to use a move action, move one, two to right there, and let's explore another tile. Hopefully it's not too bad. We found just a crossroads type tile, we'll put that right there. And I have another action, I think we're going to use our special power, and I'm going to use it to try to heal, I think we're going to use it on Robo Kettle, because he's the only person adjacent to me. Healer Kitty gets to roll two white dice to try to heal up Robo Kitty, nope, Robo Kettle. That means that with that one success, I'm able to heal the one hit point off of Robo Kettle, so he's going to go up to 10. He, Ridley, I healed you all the way. Yay! But you said Robo Kettle's name wrong. I did, but that's okay. I'll place our token right on top of that tracker. Sword Girl's going to go first. She's going to go one, two to right there, and she is going to use her special power that is going to allow her and every adjacent ally to become determined. So Healer Cat and Robo Kettle and the Sword Girl are going to become determined. That's good. Now I have, an even, I have an even higher chance of hitting. That's true. You do. Now I'm going to use my determined person to try to take out that goblin and get back that cat, what bodyguard cat that healer cat needs. We'll roll up our dice and see if we're able to take out that goblin. We got our two hits. That's yes. enough to take out that goblin. That way, we got back Bodyguard Cat. Now, of course, Give us Sword... our Bodyguard Cat. That's right. Sword Girl has the cat, though, so she has to try to pass it off to Healer Cat on her next turn. We'll remove the Goblin from the board. And Ridley, do you want to have Robo Kettle go next? Sure, I'll move him one, two, three, and he is going to hit the Rat Folk. Since we're determined, we get two red and one white. So let's roll him up and see what we hit. We got all three hits! <laughs> well, that's absolutely awesome. So that means we're able to take out that rat folk since he only has two health. And of course, we're no longer determined and either is Sword Girl. And we have to remember, we're going to turn our cards to know that we have completed our action with that character. Halfling is going to go next. He's going to go one, two, three, four, and he's going to shoot that gremlin. Let's roll him up and see what we hit. Got two hits! That's pretty good, even though it's only... It only the extra ultra kills him, it but... Does ultra kill him. <laughs> That's pretty good, ultra kill him. He'd only have one health, so he is totally dead. We'll move into the enemy phase, and we may not notice this, but sneakily behind Robo Kettle is a gremlin, and it is going to attack you, Ridley. Oh no! Let's roll up and see if he hits me. He missed me the first time, but he gets to roll a second time. Yes, he missed both times, which means we do not get hit. We'll move our two tokens down, and replace this on top of the tile deck. So first off, Halfling's gonna go first. He's gonna explore the chest, and our chest tile is a sword. So now he is able to have two white dice. That's pretty attack. good, isn't it? <laughs> and then he is also going to move on top of the chest. Also, let's take this chest off the board. And he's going to shoot the gremlin. Well, if he wants to shoot the gremlin, remember, he can't move. That's a move action to move. That's one of your actions. Why don't you just shoot him from where you are right there? Okay. All right, let's roll him up and see what we hit. And we hit him, which means he is dead. On, we'll take him off the board. Robo Kettle is going to be going next, and he is going to see what the last next tile is. It's another chest. Oh, wow. We got more chests that we can try to get a hold of. That's awesome. I'm going to place this thing chest down and we are just basically going to unlock it so I don't think there's a point in putting it down but you always have to put it down and let's see what this one is oh it's a crossbow dude's crossbow <laughs> it is crossbow dude super crossbow well, let's remove this token and that's the end of Robo Kettle's turn Sword Girl's next. The first thing she's going to do is that swap action. She's going to give Bodyguard Cat back to Healer Cat. Even though Ridley's been finding all these awesome weapons, I'm stuck with my other ones. I'm going to move one, two, three up to here, and I'll move one more to there. Healer Cat's going to go next. One, two, three, four to right there. And I might do a swap action with Halfling. I could grab that Cutlass from you, or maybe I could use your Slingshot, and you could use the Cutlass. What do you think? No. Okay, then I'll be just fine with what I have. But Dad, I want to attack from melee and from long range. Okay, I guess that makes sense. It sounds like a plan. We'll move into the end of turn at this point. There are no monsters we're going to have to deal with. I'm going to gain our two tokens back. And Ridley, if you want to go ahead and put that flame back on top of the quest deck. Healer Cat will go first. She's going to reveal the next dungeon tile, so she's going to grab this torch, and let's see what she has found. We'll flip it over. She has found card D. Oh, this could be the final 
card potentially. Let's see what it says in the book. D says, a huge troll sits in a pile of broken furniture, casually cleaning its ear with the leg of a chair. When eating the big lumps of orange wax, it picks out of its ear. <coughs> Ew. Ew. <laughs> it looks up and sees you. Mmm, dessert, it says. At this point, Ridley, we have to put the troll standee in the center of the square of card D. If the troll is defeated, then the heroes that struck the final blow takes a bag of gold card from the special item deck. All right, let's see if we can take out this troll, Ridley. Ridley, go ahead and put that troll in the middle of the board. He's uh, <laughs> apparently eating earwax for some reason. But <laughs> that's the troll. Oh, that's awesome. Here's our troll's card. He starts with 12 health and he has three speed. Look at this. He's rolled three red dice. It's out of control. At the start of the enemy phase, the troll heals two damage. The troll cannot heal once it's at zero. If you did, you could, of course, play on tough. He would have extra health, but he remains the same other than that. Let's see if we can take him out. Healer Kitty does have two actions left. She's going to use her bodyguard cat to attack twice against that troll. Healer Cat is still determined. She's going to use three dice and see what she gets. She got nothing. So that's good news. She's she stays determined. So she'll roll them again. And she's a super determined cat. She can't hit anything. That's awesome. So Halfling is going to move one, two, and he's going to attack the troll with his cutlass. Let's roll and see what we get. We hit one hit on the troll, which means his health goes down to 11. And we are going to be using the dragon. Shield. That, that is, we are going to be using the dragon shield. I got a lot of range from this crossbow, so I think I'm going to shoot him with this. What, what do you think? <laughs> I think that's a great idea. So the crossbow look has two white dice, so that means we have to roll two white dice and one red dice. Let's roll and see what we get. We got one hit on the troll, which means he now has 10 health. I am going to now start moving up so I can hit him with that mace. I'm just going to move him three. He's going to stand right next to Sword Girl and right below Healer Kitty. The last person to go is Sword Girl. She's got a total of three speed, or she's got four, but we're just gonna use two to get to right up there, or three, I guess, to get right there. That'll be the plan, and oh, I don't like that. I think I'm gonna put her right here. I've got a super awesome plan. Are you ready for this, Ridley? Yeah. From where I am, I am allowed to use my superpower. You and an and or one other adjacent hero. Okay, so first off, we, we uh, cheated the last time because it's only one other adjacent hero. <laughs> Wait a minute, what? Well, you said you had a super plan. I Since I can only do one other person, I'm going to choose Halfling. Halfling's going to go ahead and become determined, Ridley, so that maybe you can do really good with that new cutlass of yours. For the second action after moving, I am going to swing with my sword. I'm going to roll up my two white and red dice, see how we do. We got one hit, I'll take it. We're going to move to nine health on the enemy. At the start of the troll's turn, he's going to heal two health, bringing himself back up to 11. It's like we almost didn't do anything to him. I'm sad. The troll could attack somebody that's adjacent to him, either Sword Girl or Halfling. We chose Sword or Halfling, didn't we, Ridley? Mm -hmm. Why'd we do that? Du, 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 du. We got a secret power. Hopefully we don't have to use it, but we'll see how it goes here. We're going to roll three red dice and see how it goes. You got to hit three times. You want to maybe use that power? Yeah, <laughs> I think I'm going to want to use that. All right, that prevents you from taking any damage. But bad news, he attacks you again, and he hits you no times that time. Wow, what a great job. High five. We'll move down our two tokens and go to the next round. Now remember, if we do not actually search this time and try to keep on attacking that troll, we're going to start moving this token down, and if it goes off the board, those spiders will appear. I'm going to go with Halfling first. He's going to use his uh, Cutlass, and he's going to attack him. Since I am determined, I get to roll three white dice and run red, di red dice. This is crazy. Let's roll them all up. And I got two hits out of that. Pretty good. He goes down to nine. He's back to what he was at the beginning of last turn. Since you hit, you're no longer determined, so you get two white and one red. So let's see if you can do some more damage to this troll. And did, he did do one yeah, more he damage. Did. He got one more, so we're at eight then. We have eight Yay! on that troll. Whoa, 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 whoa. So Rubble Kettle is just going to move one space right here next to that guy. He's going to smack him. So we get two red dice, so let's, hit, let's see if we hit anything. We did get one hit out of that, which means he goes down to seven health. Okay, actually, Dad, I'm going to move Rubble Kettle one more space right up here so that um, you can see and you can attack him. Oh, that's a great idea. I support that. I'm going to use our bodyguard cat and see if I can do some damage to that troll. 
I get to roll a red and white dice. I did one damage that brings him down to six and I do one more attack. Let's see how this one goes. I hit again, so he is down to five, which means we'll move into the enemy turn and he's gonna go back up to seven, but that's okay. He's got three dice that he can roll that are red. I'm gonna roll against Robo Kettle because he has the most health. What do you think? Is that a good uh -huh. idea? All right, let's do it. We'll do our first attack here and our first attack is two damage. So Robo Kettle's gonna go down to eight. I hope you're okay with that. I know I'm not okay with that. But that's okay. We'll roll again. And look, at this time he only hits you once. So you're down to seven. But I can maybe try to heal you with Healer Kitty. At this point, we get to move our two tokens off. So you get your token back for Halfling. I get mine back for Sword Girl. And we have to move this down, Ridley, because we didn't explore anything. But that's okay. And creepy collie spiders could come if we don't explore something soon. This is true. So might have to think about that on this turn. I'm going to start with Sword Girl. We're going to use that token again to be able to make Halfling and her determined. And then she's going to swing twice with her broadsword. I'll roll my dice and hopefully do some damage. We didn't hit at all, did we? Oh, we got one at least. <laughs> the one that fell out of the tray. So it's going to go to six. With my second attack, I'm no longer determined. So I only get a white and red die. And I hit one more time. So we're at five health. Everybody's hitting at least. Halfling will go next and attack the troll. Remember, because Halfling is determined, we get to roll f three white dice and one red dice equals four dice in all. And we got one hit. That That is terrible. We got one hit out of that entire thing. One's better than nothing. It goes down to four. And you can attack again, and I'm going to take one of those white dice from you since you're not determined anymore. He got one again. Hey, we're we, <laughs> win one, one, one. We're going to hit him all the way down to the end. Healer Kitty's going to start by using her special power to heal our uh, friend here, Robo Kettle. I'm going to roll up two white dice and try to heal him. We'll roll up two white dice, see if I'm able to heal you. No, I didn't get any. That's too bad. But I'll use my red and white die now to attack and see how it goes. I got one hit. Again, slowly, slowly we take him down. He's at two health, Ridley. You think you can get him? Yes. All right. Let's you go ahead and attack next with your mace. You get to use two dice. So let's roll and see if we hit anything. And we got one hit. So he is at one hit. And I'm going to roll it one more time. And he's dead! We killed him! We did. We got him down to zero health. That is the end of the troll. It says that we get a bag of gold for defeating him. And look at this bag of gold. Really, he's got gold all over it. It's like, it's like a golden I think we, bag. I think we have enough gold now. We do. We had 26 or 24 if we counted it up. Now we have 25, 26, 27, 28. We had way more than 30. And Robo Kettle is the one that defeated him, so he gets the bag of gold. We'll remove our troll from the board. We were able to kill troll in underwear. And we'll go ahead and move our two tokens down. Now, at this point, we're going to be moving this off. So what does that mean, Ridley? Spiders! That's right. Spiders hit the board. Ridley, this means we have to put a spider in the middle of every square that has spider webs on it. So it goes in the middle of them. So to put them in all the middle squares. Where else? We got one right there. I think there's one up here. I think that's it. I think we only have four places that have spider webs. So, well... I okay. guess four is better than five, right? Mm -hmm. And the good news is we don't even have to deal with them. You're right. All we have to do is get back to here with all of our gold and we win the game. Since we placed the spiders during our countdown phase, they're not going to activate on this turn. So they'll start activating next turn. Ridley, it is our turn to go. All we have to do is make it back here. When, and you have a super special cool thing, don't you? You have that belt of teleport. The wearer may move to any unoccupied square within the dungeon for two actions. Why don't you use both your actions and move there? And boom, we were able to win. Let's go ahead and see how it ends. You buy the teapot from the grumpy Morgan Cutterbuck and head out of the dungeon to give it to Kevin. Once you hand it to him, he goes to Wizard Pebble Dash's study to admit what he has done. You hear lots of anger shouts and after around five minutes come Kevin comes back out and you want me to do Kevin this time yes all right he was very angry says Kevin but he said I'd done the right thing by telling him and replacing the teapot so he's not going to fire me well done Ridley look at this it says well done adventurers you have won the quest so that is one of the quests out of this quest book 
just to show you that's one type of quest where we had to gather some gold and fight a bad guy. The first quest we had to try to take on that snake and we had to deal with poison. And, and we did beat him. We did beat him, this is true. But paging through this, there's a lot of other cool things. Like we can try to escape, there's an escape one. This, There's one in here that's absolutely amazing where you're trying to stack cards on top of dice and that's part of the adventure, which is really cool. There's so many different adventures and different ways this game can be played. That's really awesome. On top of that, in the actual game, there is a way to go to a Facebook page where you can check out CoraQuest.com. And it's actually not a Facebook page, it's just a Quest.com where you can find some other adventures or make your own and make your characters make whatever you want. I think we have to play that one with the card stacking and dice. I, I want to play that one. <laughs> that one looks really cool. That might be the next one we do. That's all I have for CoraQuest. Thank you so much for watching, and I would like to thank my son Ridley for joining me on this adventure. Yeah. Hey, you're welcome. It was super fun. I hope you enjoyed the playthrough. If you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you know when the next playthrough comes out. Also, please feel free to leave anything in the comments below. I'd love to hear from everyone. Have you had a chance to try Core Quest? Would you like to get a copy of Core Quest? This game is awesome. It, let me know in the comments below. Again, thank you so much for watching. And if you're excited to see what comes next, then I need you to meet me at the table. <laughs>